Well, I'm going to get started. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to mute you to start off, and then uh, I will unmute at the end for questions. My name is David Hunsinger, and welcome to this Wednesday, December 9th edition of Keystroke Live, where we're going to talk about the end of year procedures. Uh, just a reminder, same login information every week. Uh, we're having it next week, and then we're taking th uh, Christmas and New Year's weeks off, and we'll start again. I believe it is January 6th is uh, the first one from 2016. Now, one of the best things about keystroke and end-of-year procedures is really there's nothing you have to do. Nothing's going to stop working. Um, you don't have to batch out totals or clear out registers or do anything, it will keep working on January 1st like it was on December 31st. So what, when we talk about end of year's procedures, these are just good things to look at or things to consider. Some of them you may not do in December, you might want to do in June, halfway through the year or whatever. Um, so really there's nothing you have to do, but there are some things that we're going to talk about that are good ideas. And um, the very first thing I'll talk about is inventory value, which is kind of involves two things. One is uh, variance or physical inventory that Lynn is going to talk about in detail next week. So how to do that, how to get your quantities on hand correct, which will make your inventory value correct. The second thing is if you want to know the inventory value of Keystroke as of December 31st, that is uh, what I call a real-time report. When you run it in Keystroke, you don't give a date range. It just says, here's the value of the inventory right now. So the inventory value report, you either want to run at the close of business on December 31st, or what I do and, and kind of recommend too is you could uh, just take a, create a directory and call it uh, – I, I do year, month, day, just because then it's, you know, call it 2015, 12, 31, copy all my data in there, and then if I need to know the inventory value, whether it's January 1st, January 31st, or um, June 15th, you can start keystroke, point to that directory, and you can run that inventory value report as of December 31st. You can see what your quantities were. You can go back and look at it, and it's a backup. But it's a, it's a nice thing to do uh, if you're going to run that in the future. But it's just good to know, hey, if your merchants are asking what do I do for the end of year, you can say, oh, run a inventory value report. When I talk about that, if I switch to keystroke here and here I'm just in keystroke advanced I'm going to go to reports hopefully I'm going to reports there we go and I'm just running an inventory database report this is going to give me what my inventory value is um, it's basically what my form is and probably I want one of the totals list, let's say totals with profit. You'll see when I run this report, just goes right to the screen. I've got my list of items. I've got my total cost, uh, total profit. You can group it so that it's by department. Like you see here, this is a three page report, item by item. Um, it'll look a lot different if I come in here and say group by department and run it summary exact same report with those two changes then I just get one line for each department shows me how many items I have my total value that's just an easy report to look at to say okay this is my value um, I could run it grouped by department but then do detailed and then books it'll list all my books cigarettes list all my cigarettes that's probably uh, the most logical way of doing it unless you got 40,000 items and that'll be a 500 page report and, and don't really want that. Remember you can run those reports to PDF files or text files and just put them in a directory that you can look at uh, when you need to. What goes hand in hand with that and um, if I go back to my 
PowerPoint, is accounts receivable. The, the same is true for the receivables report that it's a real-time report. You run it, it shows you what was receivable as of right here, right now. So you can run that out of your backup, run that same receivables report, and it'll show you what was receivable on December 31st. That's why it's good to have that directory to go back to if you need to run these reports. Or you can just run them to a... Um, uh, file and have that. I've got a queue set up, um, one called end of month, one called end of year, and I just run those reports. They go to files and I put those in a directory. Sometimes I don't even look at them. They're just there if I ever need to go back and take a look at them. Um, the, and I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, th so that's the value and receivables. Third item there is I have a sales tax rates. A lot of taxing entities like changing things as of January 1st. Uh, we do have a easy document we can email you that runs through changing the sales tax rate. Remember, Keystroke always wants to know what the old rate was and what the new rate was. If you go back to an invoice from two months ago, we still want to know what the tax rate is there. So. Uh, when you're doing those tax changes, you end up creating a new tax formula saying, hey, my state rate is going from 2.9% to 3.1%. So I have one tax formula that shows 2.9% ending on December 31st, 2015 and 3.1% starting on January 1st, 2016. That way we know where everything is. The other thing that goes hand in hand with that is you can make that change today and it'll automatically happen on January 1st. You don't have to be there to change it, to update it, but uh, it's good to have that correct. You don't want to change the, if you change the old rate from 2.9% to 3.1, if you go to edit an invoice from November, it's going to want to add another 2.2 percent tax and so you're going to have amounts due and it gets kind of sticky when you when you do that so just just um, it's pretty easy to do I'm not going to go through doing it all right now but we do have a good document that describes changing those tax rates um, I, next in there I have database maintenance that again this involves a couple of things one is there is a feature we call packing um, and in a perfect world, you should you should never have to pack. I don't recommend doing it at the end of the year. Um, what it's sometimes good to think about. I typically say uh, pack on recommendation of a keystroke tech support person. The the one thing that it is important to do if you have deleted a lot of inventory items. Packing will permanently remove what you've deleted and speed things up. So if you have uh, 10,000 items in your database, you deleted 8,000 of them, it's going to speed things up if you pack because your database file is going to be a quarter of the size um, so that it's going to be a lot smaller because you deleted all those items and packing permanently removes deleted items. On the other hand, um, if you don't pack it and you happen to say, hey, I deleted that, but I wanted it back, you can go back and get it if you haven't packed yet. So there is a little bit of an, an insurance policy there, but uh, it, it's not necessary to just say, hey, I'm going to do a backup and pack everything. Uh, packing is the rebuild function. It re-indexes as well as removes those deleted items. So if you see things, sorts that are out of order or... or uh, You've got a stray item that looks out of place. You can pack, and that'll often take care of it because it kind of rebuilds the the map or address list of of all the items in your database. The other item in database maintenance is there are um, counts like quantity sold, quantity purchased, and you can reset those if you need to using the search and replace function. And if I go into Keystroke here real quick. I get to the right place. What I'm talking about there is if I go into the database manager and say look at a inventory item here, 
Um, on here, I have uh, the total purchased and total sold. So if I want that to be cumulative, in other words, forever and ever how many I have, then I don't need to mess with that. If I want that to be just year to date, I would have to change those. Here right now, they're not editable, so I would have to come into setup and default and edit mode and go into this field. Uh, if you see down here at the bottom, F3 to edit security, I can hit F3, got it set at negative one. I can just set those to zero, hit F3, set that to zero, uh, hit F10 to save that. Now they're editable. Now I can go to find, search and replace. If I leave my, and I'll go through this quickly, but uh, we can always help you with this. If I leave the first screen blank, that will match all items. Uh, it says search right here. Then I hit F10 or page down. Now you see it says replace, and I just want to put a zero in total purchased, a zero in total sold. I hit F10. It asks you confirm change to the, each record. What I recommend is always saying yes. Here's record one. It's 20 and one. Um, down at the bottom, update this record. Yes, no, all. I'm going to say yes. Now I'm on record two. I'm just going to hit escape to get out of here. Hit page up to go to record one. It was 20 and one. Now it's zero and zero. I know it's doing what I want to. Didn't fry anything else on my screen. So I can just select this search and replace again. Search blank. Hit F10 or page down. Zero, zero. It remembers what I do. Hit F10 or page down. Then when it says confirm change to each record, I'm just going to say no. It whips through my whole database, changed 127 records. I'm reset, ready to go. Then I just go back in here to set up default, edit mode, and change my security levels back to minus one. We like them at minus one because keystroke should be making changes to the total sold, total purchased, not individuals and save those and oh I did something wrong on the other one but uh, that shows you how to reset those quantities and also just so you know if I look at the customer record um, it's got a total purchase if I look down let's find Trey I believe it is on the more you know so I have, I, have, I have it reset here, total purchase is $0, but you could reset that total purchase or last purchase if you uh, uh, wanted just the last purchase this year. So that's really what you need to do with those cumulative data fields in Keystroke. So that's the basically the database management. You can also uh, delete old items. Um, there are some stores that there's a, like a bike store might have a 2015 model, a 2016 model. You can use the same inventory item, just update the description from 2015 to 2016, or copy it to a new item, and then you've got the record of what 15 bikes you sold and 16 bikes you sold. So there's a couple things you can do there to, to do that. If I go back to my PowerPoint. Um, so we talked about inventory value, accounts receivable, database management, data backup. I'm, I like backing up. I like knowing that I have stuff around. I do it. Uh, six different ways just so that if one doesn't work I've got a backup of my backup so more than um, doing a backup because you should be doing daily backups I talked about hey just create a directory and have the have it be the end of 15 so you can always get at it you can do that too but it's a good time to just double check your backup procedures how you're doing that I know Lynn talked about it in detail a couple of weeks ago but it's just a good time to reassess how you're doing it, whether you're using an online backup like Carbonite, um, whether you're using a um, cascading backup that uh, will do things. And kind of, I'll show you an example of a cascading backup. If I switch to 
my notepad here. Here's just a batch file I have set to run on our server every um, day at, at 1 a.m. And when I say cascading, what it's doing is I have, you know, I've gotten really clever. I have directories that I call back, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the last eight days. And so every night, it takes one, which was yesterday's backup, and makes it two, takes two and makes it three, takes three and makes it four, so on. Um, and then I copy my keystroke data. Um, our, we put in KS just so people don't inst install on top of it accidentally. And I copy it into um, my back one directory. So if I had a problem, and you know, granted we're doing we're using unreleased versions and we might use it for a couple days and say, hey, it fried something two days ago. I can go back three days and find it. So, hey, somebody reset stuff three days ago. It's easy for me to go back or your merchant to go back four days, five days to find it. Um, there is a backup in Keystroke and it works great. It's simple. It's easy to use, but there are better ways of backing up. Uh, you can use batch files, you can use online servers, you can use remote hard drives. Uh, I looked this morning, I think a one tera har terabyte hard drive is about 50 bucks on Amazon, a two terabyte is about 70 bucks. And uh, you can probably set that up for somebody, charge them a little bit more, and it's easy and peace of mind that uh, they've got that backup onto a machine. Um, I kind of like I'll come in either, um, you know, Christmas or I mean, New Year's is on a Friday this year. So I'll come in Friday, Saturday or Sunday and just back up entire machines to hard drives just so that, hey, if I need something out of the registry, if I need this or that, I've got a baseline of where it is. So the most important thing about backing up is do it. it you just have to do it and uh, have a way of checking it and knowing that you can go find it if you need to. If I go back to my PowerPoint, uh, there is updating keystroke, just a good time to see if you've updated it. Um, updating other software like antivirus, maybe contact management, maybe making sure your uh, backup software is up to date and all that is going on. It's just a good time to kind of stop and check that out. Also a good time to review PCI procedures. There are some new PCI things like you're supposed to have um, the uh, restore function turned off, which is kind of crazy, but uh, you know it's a good time if you're going from client to client visiting saying, hey, let me make sure restore is turned off on all your computers because you have to do that to be PCI compliant. Let's say end of year it's a good time to inspect all of your PIN devices because you're supposed to do that on a regular basis so you can look at them, make sure they haven't been tampered with, make sure seals haven't been broken, um, send yourself an email saying you did it so that you've got some kind of doc. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just say on such and such a day I checked six terminals and they weren't tampered with and then you've got the record of doing that. So it's good to review that, good to review security procedures like, hey, we've had three employees quit this year. Let's make sure they're off our security alarm system. Let's make sure we we uh, hit or disabled their login function in keystroke and uh, maybe log on function to computers. It's just it's kind of a good time to stop and make sure you've done all that house housekeeping security wise. So with that, I don't know if, if um, I will unmute everyone. That was a quick review of, of what I like doing, what I like seeing. I'm going to unmute everybody. I don't know if anybody's got anything else that uh, I missed that they like doing at the end of the year. I'm open to those suggestions. But a lot of it is it's just a good time to stop and uh, look at things you don't necessarily look at every week or every month. So does anybody else have any other uh, questions or suggestions on other good end of year procedures?
and everybody can hear me, right? Yeah, one at a time, please. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you, did, you did such a good job, we don't have anything to add. Okay. <laughs> well, you know. Is there not, anybody in any... Oh, right. Go ahead. Is there, like a li- is there like a library where, you know, people can share or should we just use the, the Yahoo groups? Like, you know, we're reasonably new and somebody's backup routines and things that you're using or showing us. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good idea. The Yahoo forum is the perfect place for that, that you can put it out there and you can get other people's ideas on um, what they do. Um, I know what I do is a little bit of overkill just because um, I'm, I like doing that. I've, I've talked to so many people that have, haven't had a backup. I always do one. I do one at the every, at the end of every month and then, I put one in a safe here and I take one home and then the next month I'll give it to my business partner Dana and he'll take it home and bring me back the old one. Uh, if, if we get killed by a flood, we've got our, our critical data saved someplace else or put it in a safety deposit box is, is the other thing uh, you can do. It's just, it's kind of hard access these days. So, But the Yahoo forum is a great place for questions. Um, I do have a... Uh, this is kind of a end of year procedures document. We have a document on variance. We have a document on uh, changing tax rates. So call us up. We can shoot that out to you very easily. I think we're going to, um, in version eight, add a few of those into the standard docs directory just because we do end up sending them to so many people. Well, thanks everyone for attending. You can hear Lynn next week talking about variants, and then we uh, take a couple of weeks off for the holidays. So have a great day, and we will see you next week at 